Hey, this is the Swedish guitar node, and today I'm gonna do a demo. I got this PV Bandit uh, that has been one of my dream amps, and now it's finally mine. So, yeah, I thought I'd do a demo of it. Um, they used to say that PV Bandits were the most sold guitar amplifiers in the world, and I don't know if that still holds true or if it ever held true. Uh, but there certainly are very common, you see them everywhere, and uh, yeah. They've been around for quite a while, and they have been made in several different versions. This is a early 80s one, it's in the Solo series. That has been getting quite some recognition and actually been kind of popular to buy as a vintage amp. Uh, it's a solid state amp, of course, I love solid state amps, so here we go, and um, yeah, it's, uh, as you can see, a combo, it has a 1x12 uh, speaker, it's a PV Zone Scorpion speaker, also rather famous, actually, for its good sounds. Um, in the back of the amp, it reads that it's 150 watts. I can't find anything to back that up because I can't find really any other information about PV Bandit amps that are 150 watts. But I don't know, maybe this is the European version. I don't know. It's made in the US, as was all the PV gear back then in the early 80s. So every single thing is US made. Uh, it has two channels, a normal and a lead channel. I will come back to that when I show you some sounds. It has uh, an effects loop. And uh, yeah, it has a spring reverb, a real spring reverb actually. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Nothing more to say. Uh, so yeah, let's go through it. We have uh, the tone section of it is shared between the channels. So we have the same thing and it's a bass, middle, treble and presence. And that's something they don't have on the current uh, PV bandits. Uh, it's just bass, middle, treble, I think. They have had all kinds of versions. I remember the ones in the early 90s, they had uh, because they were mimicking the 5150, they have the resonance and presence. And yeah, they have changed this uh, around quite a lot. Uh, they are very famous for being very solid. They are very famous for not breaking down and being very reliable. So that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm looking for. And the reason I got it also is, again, it's a solid state amp. I need something that's very clean. And we'll come back to how you get a proper clean, clean sound of this one, because it's not obvious at all. And yeah, let's start. We have the normal channel. I suppose we should start there. And uh, yeah, it works like, I don't know, a vintage Fender amp or something. It's just one knob, a volume, basically. They labeled it pre here, so it's pre-gain, but there's no master volume at all, so it's just turn it up. And as you turn it up, I won't be able to go that loud, because I <laughs> will be disturbing the neighbors. Uh, but as you turn it up, it starts to break up, and that's not a thing I want. Uh, but yeah, if you're going to mimic a, a vintage classic tube amp, then I suppose that's what you're after. So yeah... Um, it features a bright switch, uh, both channels have bright switches that like enhances the high frequencies. And uh, there is on the EQ, uh, you can pull out the middle and you get, what's it called? Thick, <laughs> the thick switch and that it's basically a mid boost. So yeah, here's the normal channel. And now it's around, yeah, right over three out of ten, so. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. And if I pull out and get the bright switch engaged, it sounds like this. And yeah, I have the reverb on, it's on, yeah, it's also around three somewhere. Uh, I can show you how <laughs> it sounds on the extreme setting. So there's the one at three. And then we turn it up to 10. Um, yeah, okay, let's go to the lead channel and uh, yeah, it's kind of strange why they call it a lead channel. Of course you can get more distorted tones there, but that's also where I find the best clean sound, actually. And the bad thing about this version um, is that there's no channel switch, no channel switch at all on like the panel and the back somewhere, nowhere. So you need to have a foot switch. <laughs> That's just bad design. And yeah, they fixed it later on, of course. Mm. Yeah. Another bad thing, I, while I'm going through the bad things, uh, there's no external speaker out like they have on the current ones. So you can't drive anything else besides the built-in Scorpion, which I'll be fine with. I prefer 1x12s over anything. I, I like 1x10s as well, but not 4x12s. And so for me, it's fine. But for someone that would want to try something else, you can't really with this amp. And that's, that's a flaw, really, I think. Okay, let's go to the lead channel. So now there are three controls here. We have pre, post, and that's input gain and output gain basically so it's like gain and master uh, volume and then we have this mysterious knob called saturation and saturation is yeah another word for distortion overdrive overloading the input stage basically so now we have the saturation at zero and uh, yeah both the pre and post are at yeah less than two now so that's Here's what it sounds like with that setting. And here you can turn up the post like the master volume and there will be no added distortion or clipping or overdrive. So we'll see, I turn it up a bit, not to scare the neighbors away. So you see it stays completely clean. What you heard there was the actually the input of my mixer clipping, not the amp. And uh, so yeah, this is what I will use basically, because this will be this is the loudest clean sound you can get on an amp, and it doesn't like the normal channel that actually breaks up. This one doesn't. Okay, so let's get some actual lead sounds then. So I will turn the gain up or the pre up a bit, see how that affects the sound. Okay, so now the 
Pre is at eight. Yeah, here's the bright switch, by the way. It's not death metal m distortion, as you can hear. And that's at eight, so it's pretty turned up. Well, in let's engage the saturation then. Um, since that, I suppose, is supposed to add some distortion to it. So I will turn up the, turn up the saturation to halfway at five, see what that does. <laughs> It's still not super distorted. Um, so yeah, let's turn the saturation up to 10 and see what that does. fine crunch sound it's not super mega distorted um, people always say that tube amps are so good to drive with uh, over overdrive pedals and boost pedals well I'm gonna show you what it's like to drive this amp with uh, overdrive pedal I am using my good old boss DS1 distortion and turn down the distortion so it's basically like an overdrive it's more of a boost actually so, we'll see what that does to the amp. So that was the just the amp, and then we had the distortion. Distortion adds sustain for days, you can tell. 
Um, yeah, I think it drives us pretty well. And I mean, it retains the character of the amp and it just makes it more, I don't know, singing. Uh, I'm gonna show the extreme setting because then it sounds very fussy. I'm gonna turn uh, the pre gain up to 10 and combine that with the saturation at 10. So you'll hear that. That's what you get with a spring reverb, by the way. Hit the amp and you get funny sounds. Uh, yeah, this has been the Swedish Kitana demoing the PV Bandit, a solo series from the early 80s. Hope you find this enjoyable and interesting. See you soon. Bye.